recording in progress. Hey guys, Mr. Riz here to help you out on the uh, Roots of Polynomials review worksheet. <clears throat> Just to let you guys know, this is pretty much going to be the same format of your test that you guys will take. Um, so let's just go through it and see kind of each problem, what it's going to look like and how we solve it. So the beginning here, I'm going to give you guys four graphs. And what you need to do for each graph is you need to determine whether the degree is an even or odd degree polynomial and whether the leading coefficient would be positive or whether it would be negative. OK, um, so first off, let's talk about even degree ones. Even degrees either start at the bottom and end at the bottom or start up high and end up high. So they end and they start and end in the same spot. So these first two up here are both even degree polynomials. Uh, let me get my marker out here and let's mark that down. All right, so we can say like this is even and this one is also even. Now the difference between positive and negatives Positives start up high, end up high. They are a positive on the y. Negatives start down low, end down low. Okay, so this first one is an even negative. This one would be an even positive. Okay, now if we look at the other two examples here, these ones would be odd. Odd polynomials start and finish in different directions. So this one starts up high, ends down low. That would make it odd. This one starts down low, ends up high. That would make that one odd. Okay, now to determine whether they are positive or negative, I like to think of like the general slope of the graph. This one here, if you look, starts low, ends high. That is moving up, and that's a positive direction. This one starts high, ends down low. That would be a negative direction. All right, so this one's an odd negative, and that one's an odd positive. Okay. So that first page there is just pretty much to kind of help you out, um, get some easy points here. Now, the rest of the problems here, you guys can see, um, basically, you are going to be doing the same thing. You're going to break down the polynomial and find the factor and the zeros of each one. So I do give you kind of some clues of what to do. You want to determine the number of factors and zeros. Use a graphing calculator to find any of the nice fact zeros and factors. Use synthetic division to break down the polynomial. And then if necessary, use the quadratic formula to find the remaining factors and zeros. So you can see we have four of these problems here. So this is going to take us a little bit of time, but we'll get through it. We'll get used to this, and hopefully you guys can start to see the pattern. So let's start with this first one here, and let's just determine the number of factors and zeros. All right, so if we look here, uh, I'm going to kind of write it. You guys can probably put it all on one page, but I'm going to try to squeeze it here on one screen. All right, if we have 6x to the fourth, really we don't need to see anything else. We have an x to the fourth. That means we are going to have four factors. So make sure you put down four sets of parentheses and then also put down 4x equals. All right, then to determine the nice ones, we're going to open up a graphing calculator. I like Desmos. I think it works a little bit quicker and easier than other ones. And we're going to type in the equation 6x to the fourth minus 11x to the third minus 71x squared plus 64x plus 48. Okay, we can kind of zoom out and see the graph it goes down, you know, it makes like a really stretched W, but really we just care where does it cross. All right, we have, I would say, I mean, negative 0.5, we probably can figure out what that is as a decimal. Um, but the only nice ones that we have are negative three and positive four. So let's write that down. We got X equals negative three and X equals positive four. So that means the factors are kind of the opposite expression of what would make this zero. So it would be an X plus three. We plug negative three in for that, that would make it a zero and an X minus four. All right, now to figure out exactly what these other two are, what we're going to do next is we're gonna use synthetic division. I'm gonna just minimize this. And we're gonna break down this polynomial to something a little bit smaller to work with. Okay, now it doesn't matter when we use synthetic division, whether we use the negative three or the positive four first, 
I'm going to challenge myself. I'll start with the negative 3. All right, we write down the leading coefficients. We have a 6, negative 11, negative 71, 64, and a 48. So let's break this polynomial down. Remember, you always drop the 6 first. And then you start multiplying and adding. So 6 times negative 3, that is a negative 18. We add negative 11 and negative 18, that's negative 29. All right, negative 29 times negative 3 is a positive. Is that 81? No. It is 87. All right, and if we add negative 71 to that, we get 16. All right, 16 times negative 3 is, just using a calculator here, uh, negative 48. All right, if we add 16 to that, or add 64, we get a 16 again. And 16 times negative 3 is a negative 48. If we add 48, we get a 0, which is what we want. So when we divided, we got this to break down to a 6x cubed. Remember, it drops down a power. Minus 29x squared plus 16x plus 16. Well, we're going to even want to make that smaller. So we're going to use synthetic division now with the 4 here. The 6, the negative 29, the 16, and the other 16. All right, so we'll drop down the 6. That's always the first step. Drop down the first number. And we start multiplying. 6 times 4 is 24. We add that to negative 29. That would be negative 5. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. If we add that together, we get uh, negative 4. Sorry, I don't know why I paused there. And negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. If we add that to 16, we get 0. So we break this down. This is a 6x squared minus 15x minus 4. We'll just drop that answer down by a degree. Okay, so now to figure out the other two, it's necessary here. We're going to use the quadratic formula to find the remaining factors. Excuse me. So quadratic form, if you don't know, it's on the very last page here. It's on the back of the packet. I'm just scrolling through. You can see it here. Hopefully you have it memorized. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we would have x equals negative, our b is a negative 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a is 6, c is negative 4, all over 2 times a is 6, okay. All right, negative negative 5 becomes positive 5. 5, negative 5 squared is a positive 25. And then we got this negative 4 times 6 times negative 4. All right. So if we multiply that all together, that is a 96. And that's a positive 96. And then 2 times 6 is 12. All right. We can add the 25 and the 96 together. Uh, and we would get 121, which is nice because the square root of 121 is 11. So our other two answers are going to be whatever 5 plus 11 divided by 12 is and whatever 5 minus 11 divided by 12 is. All right, so let's figure this out. 5 plus 11 is that is sorry i'm um that is 16 and 16 divided by 12 that does reduce we can divide them both by four and that is a um four over three so that means one of the answers is four over three now the other answer here let's see five minus 11 is a negative six negative six divided by 12 does reduce to a negative one half which those are what the other decimals are equivalent to. Now, how can we write them as factors? Now, if you just put like X minus four thirds, probably not gonna mark that wrong, but if you think about it here, if we were gonna write X minus four thirds, 
Remember, you don't want to leave it as a fraction. You would do the simplify or slide. And since that doesn't simplify, we're going to slide that over. So this is going to be a 3x minus 4. And this one over here would have been an x plus 1 half. If you write that down, I'm not going to mark it wrong. But let's try to you know be a little fancy here. Let's slide that on over. This would be a 2x plus 1. OK, so there's one of these problems done. We got a couple more to go. If you ever want to you know, pause the video, try this on your own, or go back to watch, it's a good idea. OK. So let's start this back up again. Here we go. We got x cubed plus 3x squared plus 25x plus 75. All right, we're looking for the factors and the zeros. And first thing we want to do is just determine the number that we're going to have of each one. It's x cubed, so we're going to have 3. So we got three different x equals. OK, next, let's find the nice real ones by graphing this in a Desmo. So we pull up Desmos and we type in the equation. All right, we got x cubed plus 3x squared plus 25x plus 75. Let's zoom out. Mm. OK, it looks like it only crosses one spot. At least that one spot is nice. And that's at negative 3. All right, so that means our 0 is at negative 3, and the only nice factor we have is x plus 3. OK, we can deal with that. As long as we have one nice one, we can use quadratic formula to find the other two. All right, so we got to use synthetic division here. And our leading coefficients is a 1, 3, 25 and 75, all positive. <clears throat> all right, we'll drop down the one and we start to multiply. One times negative three is negative three. If we add that together, that is a zero. Zero times negative three is zero. If we add that to 25, that's 25. And 25 times negative three is a negative 75. If we add that, we get zero as a remainder. So that means we broke this down to 1x squared plus 0x's plus 25. All right. Now, there is another way that we can solve this problem here. But what we probably could do, or might as well just do, because we're going to do the same, you know, let's solve the problems all the same way. Let's do the quadratic formula. So we got x equals negative, our b is 0, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 0 minus four times a is one, c is 25, all over two times a is one. Okay, so we got x equals negative zero, okay, that's zero, plus or minus the square root, zero squared is zero, and we'd have minus four times one times 25, that's 100, and then two times one is two. All right, we can subtract the 0 minus 100. That would be negative 100. And we get an answer. OK, the square root of negative 100 does come, come out somewhat nice, uh, but it actually ends up being a 10i. Remember, we can't really take the square root of a negative, but we can express it as an imaginary answer. So we do get two solutions here we get whatever 0 plus 10i divided by 2 is, and 0 minus 10i divided by 2. So we get 10i divided by 2, or 5i, is one solution. And the other one here, well, we get a negative 10i divided by 2, and that's a negative 5i. So our other two answers are negative roots, or negative zeros, and so that means our other factors are going to be x minus 5i and x plus 5i. OK, I kind of thought that one was quicker and easier than the last one. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, OK, let's keep this going here. Let's try to find the next one. OK. Third one here. OK, another x cubed. So we know, just like the last problem here, we're going to have three factors and three zeros.
Okay. So let's plug this into Desmos. Let's try to find the nice one. All right, Desmos time. We got x cubed, but uh, let's change this to a 6x squared, a minus 12x, and a minus 72. Okay, now this crosses three times, but we can see only one of those answers come out nice, and I don't even know what that would be as a fraction. So only looking at the nice answer of negative 6. Okay, it is what it is. Negative 6, and so that means we have an x plus 6 is our nice factor. All right, so let's break this down to a quadratic here by using synthetic division. We put negative 6 in here, and we got 1, 6, negative 12, negative 72. Okay, we're probably going to get a very similar type of problem here. Drop down the 1. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. If we add that to 6, we get 0. 0 times negative 6 is 0. If we add that to negative 12, we get negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 6 is a positive 72. It means we get 0 remaining. So this is a 1x squared plus 0x minus 12. Okay, so let's use the quadratic formula here. x equals negative 0. Plus or minus the square root of, hey, 0 squared. I'm just like the last part. I think this is going to come out kind of nice and easy. 1, negative 12 over 2 times a is 1. Okay, so we would get a negative. Okay, we got 0. Plus or minus the square root of 0. And then let's see, negative 4 times 1 times negative. That is a positive 48. 2. All right, so then we would add them together. We had 0 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 2. Now, the square root of 48 is really close to 7, but it is not 7. Square root of 48 is 6.92. Okay, so that means we actually have to break this down. So going through, we're breaking out of jail. All right, 48 is 4 and 12. That's a 2 and a 2 for 4. Uh, 12 is 4 and 3, and another 2 and a 2. All right, so we're breaking those down. So we have a pair of 2s and another pair of 2s. So two twos get to go outside. So that would be a 4 on the outside, and this 3 would be left over on the inside. All righty, so that means our two answers are 0 plus or radical 3 divided by 2. And the other answer would be 0 minus 4 radical 3 over 2. <laughs> Excuse me. OK, well, that would mean 0. Um, that would be 4 radical 3 divided by 2, uh, which would be you can divide the 4 by 2, so we get 2 radical 3. And then on the other side here, if we divide by we have a negative, it'd just be a negative 2 radical 3. So we get a positive 2 radical 3 and a negative 2 radical 3. And so that means our other two roots are x minus 2 radical 3 and x plus 2 radical 3. And that would be the correct solution. We can't really simplify those. They're just radicals that we leave like that. Okay, one more to go here. What else could be given to us? Okay. Here's one, uh, it's actually not too bad, but a lot of simple mistakes can be made. Okay, so with this problem here, you first look, we got x to the fourth plus 15x squared minus 26. You'd look and see, be like, okay, that's pretty small. But if you remember our rules with a factor, since that is x to the fourth, we're going to have four of them. All right, and that means we are also going to have, oh, I'm going to make that last one. I'm feeling the last one's going to be bigger. Uh, we're going to have four zeros. Equals x equals x equals x equals. Okay. So let's type this in on Desmos. Let's get our nice ones. Hopefully we can get two, maybe more. Didn't need to click that one. All right. Let's just type this in. We got x to the fourth plus, plus 15x squared. Minus 216 
Ooh, okay. Looks like a really big parabola. It does cross the two spots. Fingers crossed. Okay, negative three and positive three. All right, so let's mark that down. We got a negative three and a positive three. So that means we have an x plus three and an x minus three. All right, so let's use synthetic division on this to make it smaller. Now with synthetic division here, we got to make sure we use our place filler. So we do have a one X to the fourth. We have a zero X cubed, 15 X squared, a zero X and a minus 216 at the end. So we do have to have our place fillers. All right, we'll drop down the one and then we'll start working our way through. All right, one times negative three is negative three. If we add that to zero, we get negative three. Negative three times negative three is a positive nine. Nine and 15 together make 24. 24 and negative three. Let's use the calculator. It's early in the morning, plus there was daylight savings time. I'm pretty tired here. It is a negative 72. If we add 72 and zero together, that's negative 72. And if we times that by three, fingers crossed, yes, we get a positive 216, which we add together, we get zero remaining. So that reduced to a 1x cubed minus 3x squared plus 24x minus 72. Well, let's break that one down by plugging it into synthetic division, but let's use the positive 3. So we got 1, negative 3, 24, negative 72. No need for place fillers on this one here. All right, so if we break this one down, we have a 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, nice, add them together, that's zero. We gotta keep going though, zero times three is zero. We add that to 24, we get 24. And 24 times three is 72. We add that to negative 72, we get zero remaining. So this broke down to a one X squared plus zero X plus 24. Kind of like having those zero X's. Makes it kind of nice, less complicated to do some things. Alrighty, so we got to use quadratic formula here to figure out what are the other two factors. So x equals negative are b is 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times a is 1 and c is 24 all over 2 times a is 1. All right, so we get x equals uh, 0 plus or minus square root of 0 minus four times 24. Let's see, is that 96? I think it is, but I don't know. Yep, 96, okay. All right, so we get zero, oh, x equals zero plus or minus the square root of negative 96 over two. Now 96 does not break down, or it does not come out nicely, but we can break it down. All right, we know it's four times 24. And then we know four is two and two, 24 is uh, two and 12, and that's two and six, and that's two and three, okay? So if we look at this here, we would have, just crossing things out, pair of twos, another pair of twos, oh, I didn't mean to cross out that three, and a two and a three by itself. All right, so that means we would get a, Oh, and then it's negative as well. So we would actually get a two and two go outside. It's four and an I because it's negative. And we'd have this two and three inside. So that'd be a six on the inside. So pretty weird breakdown, but we got it here. And so that means our two solutions are going to be zero plus four I radical six over two and zero minus four I radical six over two. Okay, now uh, zero, that would just be four I radical six over two, and we can divide the four by two, so we get two I radical six. Not the prettiest answer, and here you probably can assume we're gonna have a negative two I radical six. Same thing, except for it's negative. Definitely not winning homecoming queen, but uh, hey, it works. So we get a 2i radical 6 is one of the solutions, a negative 2i radical 6. 
And so that means our other factor would be x minus 2i radical 6 and x plus 2i radical 6. Okay, kind of a weird test, but you guys can see this actually goes through and breaks down a lot of different things that we have learned throughout the year. We have understanding the, uh, you know, the fundamental theorem of algebra, how many roots can we have from a polynomial? Uh, we can determine or use synthetic division to simplify or break down a polynomial, divide it. And then we got to use the quadratic formula. Even in quadratic formula, we have to make sure we understand how to break down a radical and express it as imaginary answers as well. So using a lot of different things together. Hopefully this isn't too bad of a test. If you've done these practice problems, you know, you've been doing your work. You kind of know the routines, you know the steps, you know what to expect. Uh, thanks for watching this, guys. If you have any questions, make sure you reach, reach out. Um, if not, have a great day, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.